Over the past few months, we've been taking a look at AMD's third generation Ryzen CPUs, and we've seen some significant uplifts in performance, both in gaming and production workloads compared to second generation. If you've ever wondered what those performance improvements look like multiplied across 32 cores, well, that's what we're looking at today. So this is AMD's new 32 core Threadripper 3970X. And although it does come in at a hefty price, the performance here is quite frankly, mind blowing. AMD are headlining third generation Threadripper as the ultimate CPUs for intense content creation. And I really want to emphasize the intense part there. To summarize these third generation Threadripper CPUs, they're pretty much going to be overkill for anything less than intense content creation. We'll see why in just a moment. All right, so there's a lot to talk about here, so let's just jump right in. Apart from operating on the new seven nanometer architecture, compared to the previous gen 32 core CPU, the base and boost clock see a significant bump. The TDP gets lifted to 280 watts. We get double the L3 cache, a faster memory spec, and PCI Express 4.0. One of the most noteworthy changes though is that third generation Threadripper will not run on the slew of X399 motherboards that are out there on the market. Instead, you'll have to opt for a new TRX 40 motherboard. So the price of the chips themselves are more expensive. That's kind of justifiable due to the IPC and spec bump, but you can also expect TRX 40 motherboards to have a decent premium over X399. It's a similar ordeal to what we saw with X470 versus X570, where you will have to pay a bit more for features like PCI Express 4.0. The motherboard that I've got here for testing is the ASUS TRX 40 Zenith 2 Extreme, which compared to the X3 99 Zenith Extreme adds active chipset cooling, a beefier VRM with superior cooling there too, and of course, everything else to run the new line of CPUs. Also note that the new CPU socket is also shifted much lower to accommodate that larger VRM. So AMD are claiming boost clocks of up to 4.5 gigahertz for the 32 core 3970X, but if you've seen our previous third gen Ryzen testing, you'll know that you're only going to see that under seriously light threaded workloads. In Cinebench running on a single thread at least, we can validate those numbers. We're seeing a consistent peak of over 4,500 megahertz for the fastest effective core. At full tilt in a workload like Blender though, you'll see the 3970X sustaining under 3.9 gigahertz on all cores. So if you're using this CPU for what it was designed for, this is what you can expect with fairly typical cooling. The exact sustained values for my sample under the test bench conditions are around 3850 to 3860 megahertz, and it did this under no thermal restraint. Speaking of which, the 3970X actually runs surprisingly well on a 280 mil liquid cooler with a standard Acetec cold plate. As we've come to learn with more expensive Zen 2 products, they run at exceptionally low voltages, which in turn means lower power draw and thermal output. After 20 minutes rendering out a scene in Blender, the 32 core 3970X peaked at just 75.5 degrees C. Overclocking is not something that I had a lot of time to play with for the 3970X, but I am planning on doing a dedicated separate video for that, so definitely stay tuned. So kicking things off with a look at Cinebench R20, we can see that the 3970X is really just at a completely different level here. It's over 85% faster than the stock 3950X, and given that the 3950X 50X operates at a faster clock, that performance scaling is looking pretty solid. It's also a brutal 95% faster than the stock 10980XE, which also launches today. Review on that one versus the 3950X will be uploaded in a few hours. Moving to a single thread, and performance here is just a couple of points behind the overclocked 9900K and 9700K. So if you do use Cinema 4D as a 3D modeling, animation, or render software, you can expect some really solid performance with the 3970X. This is an application where third gen Threadripper is an easy recommendation. In Blender, the 3970X is around 47% faster than the 16 core 3950X. So at least for this scene tested, the 3950X is going to be the better choice based on value. For raw brute performance though, the 3970X is the fastest CPU that I've tested here by a long shot. It's also 42% faster than the i9 10980XE. Taking a look now at a bulk file proxy ingest in Premiere Pro. This is basically the creation of smaller resolution files to edit with. And in this instance, creating 720p Cineform files from the original 4K ones. The Threadripper 3970X was only 10% faster than the Ryzen 3950X here. So for a mid-range content creation use case, 
the 3970X is completely overkill. Premiere Pro's export times confirm this, where the 3970X's extra cores can only be leveraged so far in this program, a little under 30% faster than the 3950X here. I want to reiterate the marketing headline for third gen Threadripper, that is intense content creation. You're likely going to see much better core scaling performance from a professional editing software like DaVinci Resolve Studio or Avid Media Composer. 7-Zip shows some interesting results. File compression doesn't show huge scaling above the 3950X, but decompression shows about double the performance, with scores that are just pretty clearly breaking the chart. V-Ray, a CPU ray tracing benchmark which has been recently added to this list, shows exceptional performance scaling for the 3970X. We're seeing around a 90% performance improvement over the 3950X and a 57% improvement over the 10980XE. Now we're going to breeze through these gaming benchmarks here because quite frankly this is not a gaming CPU, despite the performance in most titles being fairly close to the 16 core 3950X, which is also fairly close to the R5 3600 in some titles. In summary, with 32 cores and 64 threads, some games just don't know what to do with that. Far Cry 5 seemed to be a prime example in that regard. Although disabling SMT did help a little, it was still completely unplayable. I'm not sure if this was a driver issue or if this is how the game actually plays on a 32 core CPU, but it's just worth noting for now. Generally though, it certainly can double as a gaming CPU if you get lucky with a title that doesn't freak out over those extra cores. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is one example where performance was right up there with the 3950X and 9900K with no hiccups at all, and Battlefield 5 is another example where the extra cores don't hold it back. Overall, in most titles, the 3970X is about 1 or 2% slower than the 3950X, and that's pretty impressive for a CPU with this many cores and threads. To add a bit of perspective here, it's mostly equal with the stock 18 core 10980XE when it comes to gaming. In some cases, it is slightly faster. So, recommending the 3970X is pretty easy then. The closest competitor in terms of core count that Intel has to offer is the Xeon W 3175X, and that processor retails for $3,000 US and has less cores. So whereas first generation and second generation Threadripper were sort of marketed towards mainstream content creators and sort of a high core count use case, the third generation Threadripper CPUs are just a different beast entirely. A 64 core, 128 thread model will be coming eventually, but even the performance of the 32 core model and probably the 24 core model as well is just insanely overkill for mainstream content creators. This really is an intense content creation CPU. What I mean by that is that most mainstream content creators and video editors, for example, like myself, will not be saving a significant amount of time by upgrading to the 32 core 3970X, but those who will, will include those in the field of heavy visual effects, 3D modeling and rendering, physics simulations and other scientific work, and those working on movies with enormous budgets. In those applications, time saving is critical, and more importantly, the power can be leveraged by a third gen Threadripper CPU. For the rest of us mainstream content creators, the Ryzen 3950X is a much better value in mainstream applications from what we've seen in the testing, so do consider that as well. Now, I didn't really get a chance to overclock the 3970X in this review because just I was really short on time, but that is something I am planning on doing in a separate video in a couple of days. So I am really looking forward to seeing how much extra performance we can get out of this CPU, especially when that overclock is applied to 32 cores. So definitely stay tuned for that. If you are interested in picking up a Ryzen 3970X and you do have the use cases that can leverage this CPU, I will leave it linked down below. As always, guys, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.